calculus is hard because it is different. It introduces completely new concepts, such as the limit, the derivative, and the integral. These are novel concepts that appear completely unintuitive and hard to grasp. When students don't understand the concepts, their applications are next to impossible. So, to understand calculus, we first must reinforce the concepts that are fundamental to its foundation. I believe the key to understanding calculus lies in teaching these concepts. The algebra and complicated math that trips students up can be learned in time, but a student who never grasps the fundamental ideas of calculus can never succeed. So, let's take a step back from everything we know about math and try to learn calculus in a whole new way. So infinity is really cool because it allows us to talk about things that are either really big or really small. Infinity has this reputation of being known as the biggest number. Have you guys heard of that before? Yes. yes. It's not. It's not. Yes, you're correct. If I asked you guys to count the numbers between one and two, 1.1 is slightly bigger than one, right? And it definitely is between one and two. We all agree? Yes. So right now, we have one number between 1 and 2. 1.11 is also between 1 and 2, right? It's a little bit bigger than 1.1, right? Yeah. So now we have two numbers that are definitely between 1 and 2. 1.111. This is also between 1 and 2. So if we keep adding 1s, that's what this dot, 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 dot means over there. That means we can just keep adding 1 on to the end of this number forever. And every single time we add 1 on, the number gets a little bit bigger, right? So it's, it's a unique number. It's a different number that's between 1 and 2 every single time we do this. And if we keep counting these numbers, as in how many numbers are between 1 and 2, we'll never end. That is infinity. Infinity is a concept. And this is crucial to understanding not just infinity, but also for calculus. So. Now with that, let's talk about 1 over infinity. If I have 1 over 2, we have this one pizza, we cut it in half, and this red right here is the amount of my one slice. We all agree? Yes. So now let's go to 1 over 3. We have this one pizza, and we divide it into three equal slices. This red slice is the amount of one slice. And now if we divide it into four, what do we notice? It gets, smaller. gets even smaller, right? So when we have 1 over 5, it's a little bit smaller, okay? 1 over 6. 1 over 15. Let's look at 1 over 80. Whoa! What would happen if we go to 1 over infinity? The question is, is it equal to 0? So remember that infinity is not a number. So 1 over infinity doesn't represent anything. Remember, we had to have a number on the bottom of this thing, right? We have to divide it into a certain number of slices. And if we divide it by infinity, to me, that means nothing. But what does that mean about our pizza slice? Well, we said it's not equal to zero. But what we can say is that one over infinity goes to zero. When we increase that number on the bottom, our slice, our slice gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And if we keep doing that forever, and we keep adding one to that bottom number, our slice is getting closer and closer and closer to being nothing, but it's never equal to nothing. What this is called, and this is important, this is infinitely small. One over infinity is an infinitely small number, just like infinity is an infinitely large number. Let's move on to something that I know you're familiar with, area. I want to talk to you guys about an interesting way to take area. So let's say we're trying to calculate the area of a triangle. A way that we might be able to do it is by taking something whose area that we do know and filling our triangle with it. So let's say we have our quarters stacked up like this. And we want to say, what is the area of a triangle that has this shape? Well, let's count the quarters and say, how many quarters fit into this triangle. So one way we can do this, we can count it just by going one, two, three, four, five. We can do that. But the way I want to talk about doing it 
is to count all the columns. If we count all the quarters, we add one plus two plus three, we get 21 quarters are shown right here. And we can say that our quarters roughly fill this shape, okay? And that there's about 21 quarters in this triangle. But if we, if we fill this triangle, the first thing I wanted to show you guys is that there's a little space in here, right? Where the quarters don't quite touch. And if we fill the triangle in, we see that there's a lot of this like overhang on the quarters. So how can we make this a more accurate measurement? Well, let's use nickels now. Now we have a lot more columns, right? Uh -huh. And what we can do is we can add up these columns again and say, okay, well, there's 36 nickels here. And now if I asked you, how big is this triangle, what would you say? About 36 nickels. And again, we did this by counting up all the columns. And now if we look at the inside of the triangle, the space in between the quarters are a little bit less. There's not as big of a gap between the quarters, or between the coins, making it slightly more accurate. And if we draw it, we say that there's a little less overhang, right? Yes. So let's go even smaller. Let's use a dime. And if we count up all of the columns the same way that we did before, and there's a lot more columns, so it's a little bit harder, we get 136 dimes. If we put this triangle over, we notice two things. One, the space is really small now compared to the quarters. It's still definitely there, but it's definitely smaller space. And if we fill this triangle up, it almost looks perfect. Yes. We know that there's a little bit of space inside that we have to deal with, but as far as the overhang is concerned, it's pretty much gone, yeah. okay? It's still there, right? But there's, there's a lot less. So now let's compare the three triangles we just talked about. The dimes is definitely the most accurate out of these three. We all agree? Yes. So if we look at the columns that we used, the width of these columns is only as small as the width of this quarter or the coin. And so if we say this nickel has half the width of this quarter and that this dime has a quarter, one fourth of the width of this coin, we're taking our column and we're making it smaller and smaller and smaller. If we keep going on forever and ever and ever and making our coin smaller and smaller and smaller, making that, making the width of this column smaller and smaller by using smaller coins, the accuracy is gonna keep getting better and better. And if we make it infinity, our accuracy should be 100% eventually. So what would that look like? Well, let's take a look. This is a decent picture of what that might look like. Now obviously, one over infinity is so small that we can't really represent it, right? We can't make an infinitely small column on a computer or even draw it because we can always make it smaller, right? We can always add on to that infinity. But it might look something like this. And if we zoom in to this corner over here, we have these columns that go up, right? And imagine that these are the width of our infinitely small coins. If we add up all these columns, we would get the, the area of our triangle and it would be 100% accurate. This is one of the big concepts that I wanna drive home is that one over infinity can be used to calculate area, to find the area. And this, this is huge. Because this is one of the principles of calculus. This is the second most, arguably first most important idea of calculus, is that if we use infinitely small columns, we can find the area of anything, okay? I want to talk about another concept that's really important to calculus, and that has to do with slope. Let's start by defining what slope is. So when I think about slope, what I think of is the incline of a ramp that you're riding from left to right. So for example, if we have this guy over here, he's on a skateboard, he's going up this incline, he's going left to right, we say that this is a positive slope because he's going up. Now this guy, same skateboarder, maybe he got to the top of the hill and he goes, oh, I gotta go down now. Now he's going down this from left to right. So our slope is negative, it's downhill. We understand the difference between those two? Yeah. Okay, so with this, let's move on to talking about apples. Let's say I have 10 apples and I eat, I eat five of them in one minute because I'm like a speed apple eater. And now I have two data points. I have two numbers, two groups of numbers. We can 
put this on a graph. This line tells us that if we go to any point on this, on this graph, we can read how many apples we have at this minute. So we have this, this line, and what does this look like? Looks like a slope, right? And we can put our skateboarder on it. So this guy is going downhill, so is it positive or negative? Negative. 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 But what is the value of this slope? We, how can we calculate it? And more importantly, what makes this slope right here, so this line, different from this slope or this slope? What exactly is the numerical difference? What's the difference in the actual slope between these two, between these three? What we can do is say that the slope is equal to the number of apples that I ate over the time that I ate them. If we have this line, we start at 10, go to 5. How many apples did we eat? Five. five. And how long did it take? One minute. One minute. So our slope is going to be negative five. But what if we had a line that looks a little more complicated? This isn't a straight line. We have a line that looks something like, like this. It's not straight. It's not, it's not easy to calculate that slope. And the reason is, is because the slope changes. Let's look at a skateboarder here. He's probably going to go really fast. Yeah. Like, that's a pretty drastic drop, right? It's a really negative slope. Do you agree? Yeah. And that, let's say that, that that point, that slope, is right here, OK? Pretty negative. And if we put the same skateboarder over here, he's like riding a flat ground. He's not really going anywhere, right? He's just he's coasting. So that slope is maybe somewhere over here. But what's important is that this same graph, this same line, has many different slopes. Because this is different than this, which is different than this, and every single point is slightly different slope. So we want to be able to say, well, what is the slope at any given time? Right? How fast is our skateboarder going if we followed this line at any given number? So if we look at this graph, and we sort of have it. Okay, We take it and we cut it in half. So if you look on the bottom here, goes from 1 to 10. And it looks like a pretty curvy line. Now, let's say that that's 1 over 1. And let's take a half of that. So now we go from 0 to 5. Look at the numbers on the bottom. We go from 0 to 5 in our time. OK. So if we go again, now we go from 1 to 2.5. Now it looks like an even more straight line. And if we go again, 1 to 1.25, that almost looks like an exactly straight line. It's slightly different. It's slightly not straight. It has a slight curve to it, but it's definitely a lot better. And remember, all we did is we went from 10 to 5 to 2.5 to 1.25. We kept having that number, OK? And it looked more and more straight. So the question is, what are we doing here? What I would say is that we started at 1 over 1. Let's say we start at 1 over 1, and we have it. We get to 1 over 2. So now we're at half of our initial graph, centered about 1. Because one's always there, right? And we half that. Now we're at one over four. You following me? Mm -hmm. We keep having the length of our graph centered about one. And we're getting this number on the right is getting closer and closer and closer to one, right? So what would happen if we go a distance of one over infinity? It would be a straight line. Remember, infinity is not a number, infinity is a concept. And 1 over infinity is infinitely small. So we go from 1 to 1 plus 1 over infinity. And what we see is we recover a straight line. Doesn't that blow your mind? Yeah. Remember, we started out at this. Yeah. And we said, you can't measure that slope because it's different everywhere. It's different. Every single point on this graph has a different slope. But if we have it, more and more, and we focus in on one. We focus in right here. We're focusing on this time. And we look at only that instant of time, it looks like a line. We said before that every single point has a slope. And we also said that in order to measure that slope, we need a straight line. So if we look at an instant in time that is essentially just one point, we better get a line. Because we need a line to measure the slope there. Do you agree? Yeah. So this makes complete sense. If we look at a time from 1 to something just after 1, infinitely close to 1, it better look like a line, because we want to be able to measure that slope, because we know it exists. And that's important. 
is that we know this slope has to exist, so there must be a line there. And the question is, how we have to just be able to look only at that point in time to find that line. And this is very important because we can measure the slope of this line. Based on this picture, we know that it exists and we know that it's calculable. We know that we can find it if we have the right tools. I want you to leave with this idea that 1 over infinity can be used to find the slope of a curved line. And this is also crucial. This is, remember how I said the area was like this central, one of the two central ideas of calculus? This is the other one. This is the second half of the complete picture of calculus, is that we can use calculus to not just find the area of a shape, but to find the slope of a function, of a line, of a graph that otherwise we wouldn't be able to find the slope of. All right, so let's just recap what we learned today. We learned, most importantly, that infinity is not a number. Infinity is a concept. We also learned that one over infinity is not equal to zero. It leads to zero, it goes to zero. If we look at one over infinity, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, becomes infinitely small and goes to zero. And one over infinity allows us to find the, shape, the area of shapes using really small, infinitely small columns, which is crazy. If I give you a weird object, like, like maybe I give you something that looks like, like this, how do you find the area of that thing? That's pretty hard, right? You wanna have a formula for that. We, ha we wanna be able to use the columns. We also showed that one over infinity allows us to turn a curvy line, a curvy line like this, into a straight line at a specific point, at a specific time, which is amazing because it allows us to find the slope at any given time of a line that we normally wouldn't be able to. Students just beginning to study calculus always find the concepts of limits, derivatives, and integrals hard to understand. But when these concepts are broken down and explained in new, unique ways, such as by using coins to visualize integrals, they become infinitely easier to understand. In fact, the rather unconventional methods for teaching calculus used in this video allowed the same students, who usually hate things like word problems, to follow these daunting concepts. You were actually like really, really good at explaining everything. You gave a lot of details, and I think that was like really good. It made sense. Like I can under, I could understand it. it. Made it easy, like to understand what you were trying to say. So next time you hit a roadblock and want to give up because you just can't grasp a concept right away, take a step back and try to tackle the concept in a new way just like we did with using pizza to explain infinity and skateboarders to explain slope. Then, once you dive into the awesome field of mathematics, you will, just like the fifth years in this video, I want to learn about, like, molecular structure. have a thirst for knowledge, and one day, just like those students, go on to change the world. Thank you.